Good evening, this is Melissa with the StockSwish.com, and tonight I'm going to go over a bearish gap that failed on the day as a short. However, there was a move in it. You could have made money in the morning. It didn't end up working out correctly, but if you played it the way that I know how to play these things, you could have made money shorting this today. It is a bearish gap, so I'm not going long the stock. It ended the day green. It was green. The momentum in the stock ended up being green. So there was a move in the morning. You had to book your money and stop. I want to go over what happened here. This was ABT. Here it is down here. See this? So it opened at 25.71. Okay. Looks like it's going to work. You go through the process. You rate the gap. You watch it. You play it. It was, it was worth watching. Okay. Here's the thing. Whenever you have a bias and you're looking at something to play, you still have everything situated for yourself to do in the morning. You've got your sheets filled out, sheets that I give people when they take my course. You still got to watch it when it trades in the morning. You don't have a crystal ball. You don't know what it's going to do. You have your bias. You have your conviction. You went through the rating system, the system that I teach in my class, which is the 26 points to rate a gap. But when something opens, all bets are off if it does something showing you it's not going to work right. And we'll go over that in a minute. I do, however, want to point out that where this thing opened, okay, this was down here, 2571 is the open of, open of this day on the 9th, okay? Go all the way over here. That wasn't the 9th, this is the 10th. This is today. What the heck? Yeah, this, this is today. I don't know why that says that. Anyways, go all the way over here. August 11th, the open is 2569. You see that? 2569, and today it opened to 2571. I know it went down to 2541 before it bounced itself, but I just want you to see that, okay? 2571, this big, big, big green bar that's holding itself over here is 2569. So that's two pennies. What happened, I'm, we're going to go over it, but what happened is there was a flush down here, then it held itself right at that number. Because it opened at that number within two pennies of this big bar here, money came in and decided to support this today and it ended up being green. Let's just go back and look at it. This was all the way over here. And there it is. You see that big bar there? And this is why you got to look for these things, okay? Why didn't it work today? I don't know. Can I find the reason why it didn't work in the chart? Yes, I can. Did I know that before the open? No. I mean, it could have very well worked and gone red on the day and worked correctly. I'm not still not going long this because it's not a buy. It is not a buy. It's a bearish gap. Okay. But I just want to point out, there you see it. All right, let's go look at it. This is a one-minute chart. This is in the morning. Now, here's an example of how you can make money playing something. It doesn't even work on the day if you have if you know how to play with precision, which which I do, and I play in the one minute chart. You got to know what you're doing on this chart. But with gaps, there's precision in these trades, and they work really really nice. And even though the stock did not work correctly on the day, there was money to be made shorting this. Not a gajillion dollars, but seventy some cents. And seventy cents is seventy cents. And you don't know it's not going to work. You got to take it when it sets itself. Here's where it was up here. 28.50, gap down and open down here at 25.71. So that's a $3 gap. I'm not concerned when I see this opening here that I'm going to have an issue. Okay. Yes, this is two green bars. Do I think this is buying right away is watching it? No. This was a pretty big gap down. So fine, I'm giving it a rally. I only got two bars. Then I get a red bar. It's holding itself. Then I get these green bars. I'm not crazy about the fact that it went over the high of the day, but it didn't go over the high of the day crazy. 26.15, this is up here at 26.24, so it went $0.09 cents over the high of the day. I'm not totally, totally upset about that because it's only $0.09. Cents. It did gap down hard and immediately then holds itself, and here's the entry right here. So you're in this thing here at 26.09. You get a drop, and you got to take it off here then when it doesn't continue. You've got to take it. You had a move here. So this had a nice $0.70 cents move here. You have to book the money. You don't know if it's going to keep going or not. 
And when you get this kind of bar here and this bounce, which is going into the next reversal time, which is 945, I don't want to suffer through a rally in this when I have a profit here. I like to take it. If it sets up again, then I'll take it later. Okay. Here's the thing. This set itself here and could have held this high of the day right here, even though it dinged over at 9 cents, went and corrected itself. But the fact was it didn't. So after this did this, it went. Then it rallied up. It didn't rally into a bad area either. It rallied into an okay area here. But then what happened? It did not continue into the downtrend here. It held itself right here into 10 o'clock into another reversal time, which is an important time in the morning. I want to see my trend setting itself by 10 o'clock. If my trend isn't setting itself by 10 o'clock, I'm not happy with the play. And as you can see, it didn't work. When this went over the high of the day here, over this, I'm off this thing then completely. I don't even want to retake it. I was happy and lucky that I booked this money here. You can't, you can't retake it when it does this thing. I'll forgive this nine cents. I cannot forgive this. When this goes over the high of the day at 10 o'clock at this time, I can't do it. And also notice how it did it here. Okay, this is clearly not a rally. This is buying. Okay, this isn't sure covering here to me. This looks like buying. And these are big green bars for me in a one minute chart. I'm over the high of the day now the third time. I absolutely do not want to be shorting this. You short weakness and you buy strength. Okay, that's, that's what you need to be doing. And I'm not buying this because it's a professional bearish gap. And I'm not going to buy something that is a professional bearish gap. Because when you want to get in something in the direction of the trend of the stock of the chart, the overall chart and the daily chart, and if you get in something that the direction is incorrect, momentum can come in at any time and take you out of your position. Even if the trend of the day should happen to be green, for example, you need to be aware of that. So I just steer clear of that. If my short doesn't reset itself up again, or doesn't work right in the day, I'm not flipping them to go long. Okay, I don't like to do that. People do that. It gets murky, okay? It gets murky with your head and your chart reading and everything else. I can tell that this is now not a short on the day, but I'm not flipping it long. It's like muckety muck. I don't want to be doing that. And like I said, I'm still reading the gap correctly. It's professional bearish gap. It held itself in the day because People decided to buy it for whatever reason and hold that price like I showed you in the daily chart. Does it mean it's never going to go lower again? No. Does it mean it's not a professional gap? No. Does it mean that today it didn't work as a short for the whole entire day and it didn't end red? Yes, but you made money in it here if you played it right, if you took the correct entry. This is aggressive, but this is the kind of stuff I teach in my class. You can't do this willy-nilly in anything, by the way, either. Okay, this is a gap play, plain and simple. And then you see what it did here. So, I mean, it really held this after it blew over the high of the day here this third time. This really was buying. Came into here, scooped around, and rallied up some more. But I'm not buying it. So, you know, sometimes they're just not going to work right. But you can play with precision and still make money in something, even if it doesn't work right, if you know what to do with these, with these entries. And that was the whole lesson that I taught tonight in my class. Precision counts in trading. It absolutely counts. Getting the bias right is important. Getting the overall direction of the stock is important. Getting the whole correct reading of what's happening in this chart is important. Because you don't want to play against the trend of what's happening in this chart. This chart is not a buy. Does everybody see that? Stock isn't in an uptrend. Big money came in and supported this price today. It doesn't mean that a regular trader should be buying this. This could very well hold this high of this bar here and continue down lower tomorrow. I've seen them happen a million times. Will it? I don't know. I have no idea. But the point is, I don't want to play against a trend. And the trend here is not long. Don't try to be picking bottoms when you're trading stocks. That's not the objective of making money. Get the bias right and play it and learn how to read gaps. If you don't know how to read gaps, please take my class. Think about taking my class because I teach you how to read gaps. And if you can learn how to read gaps, you're gonna really 
increase your chart reading skills because you're going to be able to tell the directions of what's really happening in a stock. I know that sounds crazy, but it's more than just seeing what the moving average is doing. It's more than just seeing what the moving average is doing. And then let's go, let's just go back and look and see the first day that this thing gapped down. Let's find it here. Okay, here we go. This was the bearish gap that set this trend for this thing to be downwards trading today, right here. It started back in May of 2011. There it is. If you wanted to pick bottoms or wanted to buy things in an uptrend because you think you're getting a cheap price today because the stock fell today and you didn't understand how to read gaps, you would have known that this was the first move of a downtrend for this stock for a while, for almost two years. Because let's see what you would have seen. Let's see what you would have seen. Just pretend none of this happened. The stock is in an uptrend on the daily chart. If you don't know how to read gaps, you don't know what this means. This meant everything to the stock. This gap this day was the move that started the whole thing to go down to where it was trading today, with the gap today. So do you see how important it is to understand this and why you can't be picking bottoms? Some, every time something gaps down, you don't buy it. You have to be able to read what's actually happening here. This was very important. Okay. This started this whole thing down. If you said, you know what, I want to buy something because it's in an uptrend. Well, if this thing's in an uptrend, I want to buy every pullback in an uptrend. You can say that, but if you don't know how to read gaps, you're going to have a problem. Because you can buy every pullback in an uptrend if you want to carry something through. But if you get a gap like this in between those pullbacks, this is a problem. And they're not going to work. Why? Because this is a professional bearish gap. And you need to know how to read them correctly. So anyways, this whole thing then ended up moving downwards after that. Look. A look at the drop-off that happened. Look at it. Here's a, this is a bearish gap right here. Look at this one. Right there, that guy. That little one there. See that? Let's look at what happened here. 33, and it had that nice drop down to 23. This is a $10 drop that happened from June to August. See how quickly these things can happen when they go? They just zoop. This thing happened in May, and from May to August, this thing lost a ridiculous amount of money. So if you wanted to buy this today thinking you were getting it on the cheap because you didn't understand what a professional bearish gap is, you lost in this thing. And that's, once again, you don't play the whole thing to the gaps fill themselves. Somebody asked that in the class tonight. That's not a strategy. Because if you bought this this day, thinking it was going to fill this gap, or here, let's just pretend you bought this gap here. The day the stock gap down right here. This was around, the high was 35 bucks. Say you bought it there and you thought it was going to fill the gap and go back up here. No, this isn't $35. What is it? $33.29 is the high of this. Say you bought it and you thought it was going to fill this gap up here. You suffered in this for a long time until this bar happened here. So do you see how that's really not a strategy? First of all, there's no guarantee it's ever going to fill itself. It's not a strategy. And most of the time, they don't even work at all. And it, you, even if they do or when they do, it's you have absolutely no idea when it's ever going to happen, if it's ever going to happen. As it turns out, this did. It took nine months for it to do it. And you would have been down all this money suffering through it. And most people can't do that. So getting the trend of the direction that it's happening that's going to make you money when it starts to happen. I don't like to suffer and stuff. I don't want to be picking bottoms. That isn't a strategy. Gaps don't fill themselves. Sometimes they do, but that's they don't. They really just don't. Once at a blue moon, if they do, it's like luck. Anything can happen in the market once at a blue moon. doesn't mean it's going to work consistently. This is about figuring out what's really happening in this trading of the price action so you can get in something to make money consistently. And this is what I teach in my class, how to read these things. So if you're interested in doing a class, October 20th and 21st, I'm doing a class teaching my gap strategy and the plays that I do to play intraday. 
And if you'd like to contact me for more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Thanks and have a great day.